Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Demonstration on Protham is thermodynamic database for proteins and mutants. As we discussed earlier, Protham contains information on sequence and structure information, experimental conditions, thermodynamic data, as well as literature information for different proteins as well as their mutants. The major aspect of Protham is thermodynamic data and supplemented with all the other information. You can access Protham in this website, abron.net Protham, and explain the utilities and how to retrieve data from Protham. So, this is a website for Protham. So, here you can see the links with other databases like Pronet or Biomolecules Gallery. On the left side, you can see the major aspects of Protham. You can see the overview. So, what the uh, major contents of this uh, database and what we can obtained from this database and here we update what is new and the statistics page and we give few tutorials. So, here you can see the details how to obtain data or how to retrieve data from Protham database and here we can give the more details about the Protham right. So, now here is a cross references you can see the PDB map to the Protham and Cispro to Protham and so on. And here we give the uh, references, this is the major references and the citations. Currently, if you look at the different versions of these uh, uh, papers and website, we crossed more than uh, 1000, right. So, now if you go to the main page, right. So, if you this is the simple search, you can give any keywords to search protein. For example, if you are interested in lysozyme, so this is the protein uh, widely studied. Okay, and if you click go, so ultimately you can give all the data regarding lysozyme. So, these are the entry number, here this is the protein name and this thermodynamic parameters, uh, right. This is the conditions and which measurement they use to get the data and the method whether it is thermal or the denatured and here you get the complete reference, right. So, if you are specifically interested in any type of data, then you go to advanced search. Right, here we have a lot of uh, options available to search. You can search with any entry, this is the Protham entry. So, that is only specific to uh, Protham. Right, if you have any queries on any data, then you can contact the developers using the entry number. It is easy to uh, check the data. So, you can also search with the PDB code, right. Then you can use the protein name as the source. And if you know the size of the protein, for example, if you have the data on the similar size of proteins, for example, uh, 100 amino acid residues you can give the molecular weight and you can give the mutation. For example, if you want to see the uh, mutation in, uh, from lesion to aralane, okay, so you can give this lesion to aralane, what will happen to mutate this one. And here you can choose whether a single mutation or double mutation or the multiple mutations. If it is single mutation and if you start, right, you will get all the lesion to aralane mutation, right. So, here we will get the experimental data. I will explain the details uh, how to get this uh, all this data. Then you can search with any secondary structure if the mutation falls at helix or sheet or turn or coil and also locations based on the accessibility. You can use either buried or partially buried or exposed. These are predefined. If you are specifically interested on any specific uh, range of accessible surface area, you can use here. For example, 0 to 20 uh, angstrom square or 0 to 30 uh, percentage so, I give the values both in percentage right and angstrom square right. What is a which uh, unit you get using DSSP? You get IC and angstrom square. How to get the percentage values? You divide with the extended cell accessibility and give the percentage. Now, you can uh, get, uh, choose any of these options either the directly from the uh, DSSP results or you can use the percentage you can normalize with the extended cell accessibility. Then we get the measures whether you use a CD or DSC or fluorescence, these are the major uh, measurements. 
and the methods whether this is thermal or the denaturated. Right. For example, uh, if you use the data for the thermal, right, you will get the thermal denaturation. And the denaturant, right, if you say the thermal means you will get the data for the delta T m, right. And this is the data of the denaturant, so this is why it is completely null. So, if you want to get the denaturant, then you will click on denaturant, you will get the data with the de denaturant denaturation. These are conditions, so pH and for the denaturant we need to give the temperature right you can decide temperature and also you can uh, search with the different uh, ranges of this experimental data for example if you are interested in the very extreme stability for example extremely stabilized or extremely destabilized right in this case you can give the delta delta g values as more than uh, minus 10 kilo kelvin per mole and you can see the any mutations which are extremely stable or unstable see the delta delta g h2o right for example, you can say you can use it minus uh, 5, right. Then, if you see this, okay, there are some cases, okay, this is minus 5 to any number. So, this is what we get the, okay, I will show this delta to the GH2O, right. And this is the my okay. The reason is why we choose this. What is that? Because we get less number data because we put the thermal denaturant, right? Because we don't get the data with this delta delta G H two only some uh, mutations are matching is the reason. If we take this out, okay, and if you get the delta delta G is more than 5, okay, because in the protham, we give the positive sign for stabilizing and negative sign for the destabilizing. So, if it is more than 5, so you can see now if the data will be interesting. So, you can see the this delta delta G H2O, you can see these are the mutations, not many mutations, but still 32 mutations which are have extremely stable, right. So, in this particular tryptophan synthase in alpha subunit that E 49 i, if you mutate it, this increases the stability of 8 kilo kelvin per mole. Right. So, this is uh, uh, very high, right. You can see why this happens, not for uh, all the mutations, we can see several specific mutations which are highly stabilizing. But if we take the highly destabilizing mutants, okay, for example, if it is uh, uh, up to minus 5. Right, this is minus 100. This is for example, just because we need the complete destabilization. Right, if you click on that, then you can see several mutations which are having highly destabilization. Now, you can take these stable mutations and see why these mutations are extremely stable or extremely unstable. So, you can do the analysis and you can see whether you can have any uh, uh, common features which you can explain the highly stable or highly unstable mutants and so on. Right, you can use these in, uh, options to check the extremely stable as well as extremely uh, destabilizing methods. This is a state, as we discussed earlier, two state means we have the unfolded state and the folded state. And if you have intermediate states, then you can see three or four. Right, you can choose these uh, any states to get your data. Then you can get reversibility, right, you can uh, native to unfolded state and then you can return back to unfolded to native state. This is reversibility, yes. If not, this reversibility is no, right. Like this uh, keywords, right. So, you can get search with any of the keywords as well as the others, right, and the years, right. So, you can do that. So, now we have so many options to search your data, right. Now, if you display everything, there is a big mess. We do not know what you are searching for and which information do you want. So, in this case, we have a display option, right. So, you can choose any of these options do you want. I will explain uh, some of the uh, some of the some examples. Then we have sorting. You can have sorting options. So you can sort your data based on uh, the results. Then number of entries. The default value is 300, right, but you can use the more number of 3,000 or 30,000 uh, these entries so that you can download all the data altogether. Okay, now I go with the some few examples. So let's see. Uh, I want to have the stability values for all the single mutants, right. So, what to do? We got a single mutation, right, very simple, right. 
and if you click start, it is a big mess, you need all these things, right. So, now the question is among all the information, which data you are interested in? For example, you are, if you are interested in the stability data, because that is the important aspect of this Pratham database. So, you want pro thermodynamic data, okay. So, now the display option you just clear it, clear off everything, right. So, if you click on the delta delta g h2o, right, this is the change in the free energy obtained by denaturant. So, if you do so, you have to make sure that you should not uh, click the thermal here. If you click the thermal and if you do the delta delta g h2o, you do not get any data. Right. If you denature that is fine. If you do the thermal, then you have to look for the delta T m or the delta delta g, not with the uh, H2O, right? The make sure. Okay, if you do like this, right, if you start like this, what will happen? You get this data. Now the problem is you get the data, but you do not know this data corresponds to what? Right. So this is not enough, not sufficient. So, what are the important uh, information necessary for the analysis? What information necessary? You get a protein name, right? Or if you are interested in the structures, then we need the PDB wild, then it will tell you whether the mutant has the structure or not, right? Then you can make the analysis. If the structure is known, you can use structure information. If the structure is not known, you can use sequence information. Then what other information do you need? Yeah, this is very important, right? Otherwise, we do not know. Right? Mutation information is very important that will tell you. Okay, which residue is mutated to which residue in which protein, right? This is fine. And anything else do you want? Uh, delta G, if you talk about the uh, denaturant, right? If you understand denaturant denaturation, the delta G we do not get any data. So, you get the uh, delta G H2O, right? So, delta G H2O we had, then okay, we can also think about your uh, conditions. Right, because the data varies from different uh, uh, conditions. So, you can use the T temperature because denaturant, right. Okay, I can also click here if you are interested in denaturant, right. Then you can see the pH, pH right. Okay, let us see what uh, what's, uh, happening here. So, I got the data like this. Uh, this is uh, compatible because it is not exceeding the uh, pH limit and all. Right. So, you can see this is the protein name, this is a PD body, okay, almost all the mutants they have the wild type ID. If you want to have the mutant ID, they have to say, uh, click on mutant ID. Then we know that structures of the wild type and mutant. Then you can do the comparative analysis, right. Okay, this is secondary structure right, of these proteins. If you want to have any uh, analysis based on secondary structures, you can extract, right. We discussed about ARC, just you can uh, save it and if you see a single ARC command, you can get the secondary structure information. Right. Then in this case also if you see there are many null, null data, you can either remove using our command, otherwise in the database also you can eliminate this. How to eliminate this? Right, you go to the search option, go to data strategy H2O, you should get some numbers. So, you can give two extreme values, okay. so for example, you can give minus 100 to plus 100. Okay. So, M and C M at the moment we, we run click that. So, in this case if you see this, you see delta delta G H 2 you get the numbers, right. You can eliminate all the null values. So, if you want to remove the null values, you can give some range, then in this case it automatically eliminates because it will show only, only if you get the numbers, right. So, now you get the uh, some of the data, right. Now, if the, if you see this, Right. Uh, some cases, the same mutants uh, co appear several times. That will be difficult to uh, search with this one. So in this case, you can uh, use the sorting option. Okay. So if you see this one, the sorting option. If you do with this wild type residue and the mutant residue and the residue number. Okay, then you can also use the values because delta G H2O you are now using on. So, delta G H2O then you will see same mutation, maybe same protein or different protein and different locations, how it will change, right. You can see that either you can do the ascending order or you can do the descending order, right. Maybe it is a descending order that is better because we get the stabilizing ones first, right. So, if we start, oh, it is interesting, you can see the delta G, uh, 
Okay, this is the oh, because of this descending order, we get this y here, right? So, in the, if you put the ascending order, let us see what happens. Okay. So, here if you see the same mutations A to C, right, because Salana is the first one, then you put C, right. So, say different one is Bernays and the sub nucleus fatty acid binding protein, the here this is the same data, these, these two A104C, 104 104C, 104C, same protein, maybe different conditions. This way secondary structure, right, you can see this uh, values are different. 1.51 and 1.0 because pH is different. 9.6 is 1.2, right? Also, you can see this A132E. Right? You can see the difference in values minus 8.5 to minus 5.8. Okay, this is a major difference. So, it depend upon the different pH, the effect of pH. So, if we have the delta G values for same mutation from different pH, then you can do the analysis. What is the effect of pH on this particular mutation? If you can generalize for the different proteins, then we can make an analysis. Okay, this is the case for the, uh, the general generally for different proteins. You can do the analysis and see whether this you can generalize or you cannot generalize depending upon the, the uh, protein or not. Right. So now, if you see this, okay, you can see the display is uh, more than 300. Right. In this case, if you want to change it, right, here you can increase the number. And if you start. It takes a time because we need to load everything, but you know, it is not uh, so slow. So, you can uh, get the 3000, it is more because at least display 1 to 3000, so you have more number of data and you can increase the numbers and do that. Okay. So, now the, in this case, if you are interested more details on the first mutation, Barney's, here we do not have any information. So, what to do in this case? In the display option, you also click on the reference. Right. And if you are interested in the mutant structures, then you take click on PDB uh, mutant also. Right. Then if you go to start, right, then okay, and I'll reduce this number. Now this number is not necessary. Right. So you reduce to 300. So you'll see uh, this is the reference. Right. And uh, some of the cases PDB mutant is most not available. If it is lysozyme, you can get the uh, mutant uh, data. So here it is. Nothing is not displayed. Okay, here you can see the mutant structure. Right, if you click on this, one E six L, a one E six K. This is a PDB ID, so you can see this is the mutant one. Right, so you can see this. Right, so you can see the this is the wild type and this is a mutation, and you can see this one. So if you want to get the complete information, you will go to the PubMed, right. So, in the biochemistry paper, if you see the PubMed, you can access the abstract and if you have access, then you can see the full text, right, then you can get all this information, right, fine, right. So, now if you want to have multiple uh, choices, for example, if you are interested only on the buried mutations and in sheet and obtain with the uh, thermal denaturation, right. Then you better to select the DTM, that is the range is minus 100 to plus 100 degree C, right. You can see centigrade or Kelvin. Here also you can use clocal or kilojoule. So, whatever. So, what is the conversion between clocal and kilojoule? Right. One clocal is equal to? 4.18 kilojoule, right. So, you can uh, see, see, see the number. So, if you do like this, right, reversibly uh, take S, yes. okay, this is a commonly used one, take, take two, two state uh, values, right. Then, if you do like this, and here we need to change because, we, okay, already it is because thermally automatically it uh, put the Tm and the T is marked, okay, T C Tm we do not need, and measure method we reduce it, reversibility is S, yes. right, the reference fine. Then M we do not need, delta delta G we need and this we remove it and if you source we take, okay, start. Oh, right, so delta uh, is delta delta G, did I use this, yeah, it is thermal. So, 
case I need delta delta G, this I now need Yes, yeah, delta G, you get the delta G values, right, for the thermodynamic so, you can use this information for the further uh, uh, analysis as well as uh, for the prediction, right. So, likewise you can the Protham we can uh, use to get in data because it contains if you take the statistics, so it contains about uh, 25,000 entries that unfortunately current uh, there is no current updates available in Protham, but even then the available number of data are sufficient for the analysis. It said 740 unique proteins right, and the about 311 proteins contain the mutants and these are the statistics for the proteins and if you this is a list of protein names. So, you can have the list of protein names and the source names and so on. Okay, then if you go to the uh, frequency right, you can see the frequency table I showed this earlier. So, you can see the some mutations are uh, highly preferred because the experimentalist they do not want to spend the money for uh, any unwanted mutant, so they like to have uh, some specific mutations to understand what will happen with that particular mutation. This is why if you see many mutations to RNA to understand the effect of this side chain, right. right. So, likewise you can get the statistics, right. Now, if you go to the tutorial, right, so here is, so here we gave four different uh, questions. First question is test the data for single mutation in helical segments obtained with thermal denaturation experiments. What to do with this? What are the uh, uh, search options you need to use? Right? We need the because the question is helical segments. So, we need to uh, click on helical and the single mutation and you can click on the single mutation right? and the accessibility does not matter because we, do not, we are not interested in we take anything and the pH 7. So, you have put the pH 7 to 7 thermal denaturation, so we put thermal. If you do like this, right, then accordingly we click the display option, then we will start this, then finally we get the data, right, it is simple. This is the first one. And go to the second one, this is with the denaturation, denaturation. here we have the buried region. So, buried means you have to get the accessibility buried, right, and then you can see the urea denaturation, so you put the urea and the CD measurement you put the CD and the temperature between 15 and 25 degrees. So, see the temperature and if you sort out by temperature and residue number. So, in this case sorting you need to change temperature residue number right and if you start and you will get the data right. This is the one for this thing right. Then the I will take one more example. So, for the reversible mutation and uh, aspartic acid to any other residues. So, wild type residue is aspartic acid. Now, here is aspartic acid is here, okay, D to any other residue. So, in this case, I put blank, right. Then we use the other conditions accessibility and the, uh, uh, the year of publication between 96 to 99, right. So, if you use all these things 96 to 99 and you will get the complete data, right. So, you have various options in Pratham and you can use the multiple combination of uh, different options to get your uh, information. So, we use various uh, terms, right. So, what is the meaning of accessibility and for example, I put the buried and partially buried and exposed. What is the meaning of exposed? Accessible surface is very high, this outside the, the protein. So, what is the range we use for exposed? We do not know, right. So, in this case, if you go here, this will tell you, okay, what are the conditions we used for this product because we can use different cutoff values for the buried or partially buried and exposed. In this case, we use less than 20 percent buried that is very wide and 20 to 50 as partially buried and more than 50 as exposed. If you want to restrict this 20 percent as 5 percent, what will you do? Can we get it? Get the data because here the buried we define as 0 to 20 percent. If you are interested to get 0 to 5, can we get the get it that get the data? Yes, right. So, here you can uh, define the instead of buried, you have to give the values 0 to 5 or 0 to whatever you like. So, then you will also get the data. So, here uh, the help page you can get the information for all the technical terms right we are used in the Pratham database. So, you can you see all the technical terms and the, all the terms you have the uh, complete information 
So, in this case you can ex understand more about the uh, terms used in the uh, Grotten database. Right. So, what are the applications of Grotten? So, for what we use Grotten? There is no recent updates, but if you uh, go to the references, okay, references if you see, so the various applications, okay, these are the database papers and we can do the analysis and prediction. We can collect the data and we can analyze the stability data obtained from the denature and or thermal denaturation with respect to accessible surface area or the pH or the experimental conditions or the secondary structures and we can see how the stability varies, what happened to the stability in different secondary structures, right? you can do the analysis. When we do the analysis, then we can also predict, we can develop several models, regression uh, models or the machine learning techniques right? or the knowledge based predictions or the decision tree models. We can use various uh, models to predict the stability upon mutation. Then you can also get some uh, verify with the experiment data. For example, if there are some prediction methods, they predict some data. Okay, there are, these are the various uh, citations. Currently, we are not uh, upload, uh, updated. It's okay. So then it's used to cross link with other databases because Pratham is linked to the PDB and also various other databases because we have more than twenty thousand data. So these are the various Metaprod, NDDB, and the ProNet, Sriad, PGDB. All these databases they are linked this Pratham database. So, we have the uh, structural information and we can uh, in, uh, related with the thermodynamics. So, we can see to understand the structure uh, stability information with the function and the diseases. In this case, this database is uh, uh, very useful. So, there are various databases. Then any methods, so for example, they can uh, uh, predict or they can find explain some reasons for any mutations. We can verify if the data is available in the Pratham or not this experiment only available experimental uh, database. So, we can compare whether this is comparable with the other mutations in the Pratham database or not, right. This is what they use. Uh, there are many, many citations. Uh, then also it is cited in very uh, general uh, applications, right, where how we can use it for the biotechnological applications with the increase in uh, stability. So, right, they are used the Pratham database. Right, there are several uh, review articles also they are sent in the books. So, they also cite the Pratham. So, this will tell the how the program is uh, important in this case. So, if you search the program citations, you will get uh, yeah, this is the program version 4 is cited with 237 times, this is 54, this is 54, right. There are uh, many citations, right. Okay, this is 283 citations, this is the program citations, right. Totally, in the, if you add up all these uh, four or five papers, right? So we get more than one thousand citations. Because earlier years, nucleic acid research they published the updates of this uh, in databases, right? Not currently, earlier days. So we have various, various updates. We have four or five updates. So there is a reason we have the different updates. But each version we introduce new features as well as uh, increase the number of data. And so this is the reason why it is. So it is only a, a, a used resource for protein stability. So, it is a good database and useful resource right for the protein researchers. These are other databases available uh, in, uh, in this bioinfo bank so related with the Pratham as well as other uh, things. So, you can use the Pratham uh, database and get the information and have fun with this data and try to explore right more details and more uh, uh, insights about protein stability and relate with the functions or the diseases and, and that, right. Thank you.